Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Now, some of you may recall that a short time ago, I received totally unlooked for a parcel in the mail containing a six disc collection called, called, what was it called? Best Berliner Philharmoniker 100. It was 100 sniglets of the Berlin Philharmonic on six EMI slash Warner discs. It was the dumbest collection I'd ever seen in my life. And I, I don't didn't ask for it. I don't know why I got it. It just showed up. And some of you had pointed out that it was actually part of a series that EMI Warner had put out. I speculated it probably had come from Japan because they're into those top 100, top 50, top, you know, they have all these series that do that. And sure enough, it did, it did it, as it turned out, it did come from Japan and it is part of a series. And for equally unlooked for reasons, I just got another one. It's the best Wiener Philharmoniker 100. And it is even more stupid, if possible, than the Berliner Philharmoniker 100. And we're going to just go through it and see what's on it. You know, one of the things, of course, this, this cannot possibly have the highlight of the Berliner Philharmonic, which was Herbert von Karajan, the lighter side. <laughs> I mean, because the Vienna Philharmonic doesn't have a regular conductor in the way that the Berlin Philharmonic did. But but <laughs> probably Karajan shows up here too. I haven't even looked yet. I wanted to share the sense of discovery and the joy with you. So you ready? Here it is. Best Wiener Philharmoniker 100 on six discs. Okay, here we go now. <sighs> Disc one is the Strauss family. Well, that's logical, actually. I, I can't really complain about that. The only question is, do they give you complete works? Let's see. No, they don't. The Wiener Blute Waltz extract. Uh-huh. That's with Herbert von Karajan, definitely his lighter side, especially the extract. Let's see what else we got that's an extract here. Let's see. Oh, the pizzicato, 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 pepetetta. The pizzicato polka with Fort Wangler, someone always known for his lightness and sense of humor. Um, that's sort of interesting. And let's see. Oh, you get the whole Fleeter Mouse Overture. That's exciting. And, oh, uh, let's see, the Radetzky March with Ricardo Muti from the New Year's concert. All right, that's that. Now we go to At the Theater. We have the Cozy Fantuti Overture with Ricardo Muti. This is disc two, by the way. The Donna Diana Overture by Reznicek with Rudolf Kempe. You know, one of the things we need to point out here is that EMI Warner was never the major organ of the Vienna Philharmonic discographically. They recorded mostly for Deutsche Grammophon, for Decca, for Philips, EMI earlier, not so much later, occasionally, you know what I mean? So, so it'll be interesting to see what they had in the bowels of their archives to find a hundred sniglets to put in their sniglet collection. Let's see, Mascagni, the Lamico Fritz Intermezzo. Oh, remember that disc of opera intermezzos that Carrion did? I think all of those things are going to be here, or a lot of them will be. Ponchiello, Ponchiello, Ponchielli, the Dance of the Hours from La Gioconda, Schmidt's Notre Dame. Yeah, this is the opera intermezzo disc. There was one on DG and one on, on EMI that were exactly the same. Guno, Faust, uh, the Waltz from Act Two. Offenbach, the Orpheus of the Underworld Overture, that's with Rudolf Kempe. <laughs> and it was licensed back from Testament. Can you believe it? They're re-licensing stuff they already licensed to somebody else. That was part of that, that Kempe edition that Testament came out with. Unbelievable. Humpertink, Hansel and Gretel Overture with André Cluiton, or, you know, the C-L-U-Y-T-E-N-S guy, whose name I can't pronounce. Smetna, the Barter Bride Overture, and Rossini, the Barber of Seville Overture with Sir Malcolm Sargent. Talk about scraping the bottom of the barrel. Whoa, that one really was 
clinging, clinging, clinging to the dregs there. And then we have Verdi, I eat a triumphal scene. That's with, that's with Herbert von Karajan. And of course, it, well, it looks like it's 11 minutes. It looks like you get most of the triumphal scene. You don't know how much triumph they're going to include in any of these things. You know, it could be anywhere from little petite triumph to mega triumph. Anyway, that's 11 minutes of triumph. Next comes in Russia, which is something we always look to the Vienna Philharmonic <laughs> to bring us, right? Russian music, of course. Borodin, Prince Igor, Polovetsian dances, just the opening, the opening of the Polovetsian dances. Now, that raises an interesting question, doesn't it? Because no one really knows how the Polovetsian, <laughs> Polovetsian, it's Polovetsian, actually, but, you know, it usually comes out sounding like Polovetsian. So, I mean, that's the way we kind of pronounce it. It all comes from that guy who did the commercial. Remember, for another collection like this that was on Columbia, which I bought when I was a kid, when I was like 10. Remember the guy, the old British guy with the mustache standing next to the harp, you know, going, I'm sure you'll recognize this lovely melody as Stranger in Paradise. But did you know the original theme was actually the Polvetsian Dance Number no. 2 by Borodin? So many of the world's best loved melodies were actually written by the great masters, like these familiar things. Now you could own a complete library of the world's greatest masterpieces. Well, I mean, you remember the commercial, right? And and he always said Polovetsian. <laughs> That's how I got Polovetsian. Anyway, it's Polovetsian dances. And nobody knows how they start. You know, some performances begin with this sort of little squeaky slow one. Right? They begin that way. And some of them begin with a little cute tambourine, the one that's going. I don't know why. <laughs> it depends. It depends what you were doing last time you were in Palofzia, I guess. Anyway, so you get the opening, whatever that is, of the Palofzian dances, the Tchaikovsky Suite Number no. 3. Actually, it's not the Tchaikovsky Suite Number no. 3. It's just the finale, the theme and variations that used to get played from the Suite Number no. 3. But they don't know that. So, but they do give you the whole thing, the whole theme and variations, which is a piece of suite number three without telling you that that's what you're getting. Then it's, oh, look, Tchaikovsky Symphony number four, just the scherzo, with Raphael Kubelik, oh boy. Prokofiev, the love for three orange is sweet with Silvestri, hmm, not bad. Borodin, Symphony number two, Andante, just the Andante with Raphael Kubelik. I mean, does anybody think that any of this is the 100 best things the Vienna Philharmonic ever did? I mean, really? I mean, we're still in Russia, by the way. Let's let Shostakovich, Chamber Symphony, Opus 110, Allegro Molto. Well, that's cheerful. That's the second movement, you know, the one that makes you want to hang yourself. And and Symphony Number no. 5, Allegretto. Those, oh, those are with Maris Janssens. That's the scherzo. Remember, they have to get 100 of these suckers onto six discs. So it's we're going to see a lot of like scherzos and, and teeny, teeny, tiny movements from big, big, big symphonies. Let's see. Cacciatore and gain a suite number one. Well, at least you get the saber dance. There you go. So that's in Russia. Oh, and now we have On Holiday. What does that mean? The Wiener Philharmoniker On Holiday. Mm -hmm. I guess this is the Wiener equivalent of the lighter side of Carrion or something like that. You know, they're on holiday. So this is supposed to be a, a real brouhaha. Oh, look, Smetna, Mav Lost. Extract with Fort Fangler. Hmm. Can't even do the whole thing. You have to have an extract. Sibelius, the Karelia Suite. Well, look, you get the whole thing with, again, Sir Malcolm Sargent, that avatar of work with the Vienna Philharmonic. Of course, Kodai, three bits from Harianos with Rudolf Kempe, Ravel's Rhapsody Espanol with Silvestri. Oh, I get it. I guess they're going to other places. That's what the holiday is. It's the Vienna Philharmonic playing music about places other than Vienna. There we go. I figured it out. Lehar, oops, I was wrong. <laughs> Golden Silver Waltz. 
what, is, what does that have to do with them being on holiday? I don't know. Dvorak, the New World Symphony, Largo, opening. Opening with André Cluiton, or C-L-U-I-T-E-N-S, just the opening. Okay, so how much of the opening do you get? What da, da, da. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's wonderful. Vivaldi, The Four Seasons, Concerto Number 1, Allegro. Oh, no, you get the whole concerto with Anne-Sophie Mutter and Herbert von Karajan. That's exciting. That's the one where the, the album cover where they were they were wearing each other's sweaters. Remember that one? And then like on the front of the cover, they're wearing one sweater. And then on the back, they exchanged sweaters. It was all deeply symbolic, believe you me. But what does that have to do with holiday? I guess springtime in Vienna? That's a holiday? Who knows? Next, classical masters. Well, we all know who that's going to be. Well, not really. <laughs> not necessarily. It's got Mendelssohn in here. I mean, you're you're moving into another period. Let's look. Haydn, Surprise Symphony with Fort Fangler, just the minuet. Mm -hmm. Mozart, Symphony number 35. Oh, the Hofner Symphony. Finale. The finale of the Hofner with Raphael Kubelik. Then we get the Lind Symphony, the just the minuet and Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, the whole thing with Raphael Kubelik. A lot of this is with Raphael Kubelik. He did some Mozart with them back in the 19, early 1960s, it seems, 62, 63. I mean, this is old stuff. Wow. Schubert, Rosamond, uh, a bit of the incidental music with Rudolf Kempe. And, oh, the third symphony, Schubert's third symphony, the minuet with Ricardo Muti. Does anybody think the minuet of Schubert's third symphony is one of the hundred best things the Vienna Philharmonic ever did? However great Ricardo Muti's Schubert cycle is, and it's very, very good. But, I mean, just the minuet of just the third symphony? Mendelssohn, the Italian symphony, the finale with, with C-L-U-Y-T-E-N-S, Beethoven's fifth, the first movement, and the pastoral symphony, the the uh, Allegro non troppo opening, just the opening. I love it when they do just the opening. I mean, da da ba ba da 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 bum ba da. Okay, that was the opening. Uh, symphony number eight, of course, the Alleg the scherzando, the second movement. Junk 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 da 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 da. That's one of the Vienna Philharmonic's greatest things ever, it seems. And it doesn't even tell you who's playing this, by the way. No, oh, Sir Simon Rattle. Oh, God. Seventh Symphony, finale, Allegro con Brio. Oh, you get the whole finale. This is all with Simon Rattle. The Simon Rattle Vienna Beethoven cycle. Does anyone, anyone think that that is among the hundred best things that the Vienna Philharmonic has ever done? And isn't it kind of fascinating that EMI has no other Beethoven with the Vienna Philharmonic? You know, you look at all these other labels that have like 20 Beethoven cycles with the Vienna Philharmonic, right? And I guess they don't. Okay, Viennese Heritage. Well, Viennese Heritage, this is disc six. And this is kind of interesting because because they just did the Strauss family, which you'd think would be Viennese heritage, right? I mean, that's the Viennese heritage more than anything else. These are all people who happen to live in Vienna. Well, some of them never did, like Wagner, for example. You get Fort Wengler doing the Tannhäuser Overture. What has that got to do with your Viennese heritage? I don't know. Brahms, symphony number three, the third movement with Barbaroli. And you get the Oh, the Haydn Variations, the whole piece with Barbaroli. Look at that, an entire work. Brook, oh, Bruckner. <laughs> How do you get Bruckner on the Wiener Philharmonic or Best 100 disc, six disc set? What are you going to play by Bruckner? Oh, the Scherzo of the Ninth. Ba -da -dum, bum, 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 bum. That's it. <laughs> no, that's not what we get. Oh, oh my God. It's the Scherzo of the Ninth. That was... That was totally spontaneous. I'm not kidding. I thought I was just making a joke. I didn't think that was possible. Yes, it's the Scherzo of the Ninth, the whole movement with Carl Schurich. Ay, 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 ay. And then we have, let's see, more. Oh, Richard Strauss, Don Juan, the opening. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Okay, there's that. Uh, oh, God, Mahler, Symphony Number no. 1. Uh, just the Scherzo with Paul Kletsky. Oh, my God, that was awful, that recording. That was cut, remember, the, the cut finale? Hmm. Brahms, uh, Academic Festival Overture with Barbaroli, and I think that is it. Oh, and look, look, here is the whole 100 series. Look, look, look at this. This is marvelous. Let's look at what else we can get, shall we? We can get Maria Callas, Best 100. I can imagine what that is. Uh, best Opera Classics, 100. Best Puccini, 100. Best Tenor Arias, 100. Best Ballet, 100. I don't think there is 100 best ballet. I don't. I don't care what anyone's telling you. There's no such thing. <laughs> that's 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 a total desperation collection. And uh, let's see, best romantic classics 100. So I guess that's the rest of the series. Well, so there you have it, folks. The Wiener Philharmoniker best 100. I really think that since this is an EMI series, they haven't really put their best 100 foot forward yet. I think they should do the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra best 100. Wouldn't that be exciting? I mean, really? Then you could have nothing but Simon Rattle. I mean, these are the things that they're pushing, right? Oh, my goodness. And of course, they could do the Philadelphia Orchestra best 100. You could have Moody and Ormandy. You could, you could rip it apart that way. And they have a Beethoven cycle. The Philadelphia Orchestra, a whole thing. Anyway, hey, what can we do? It's just, it's just the stuff this wacky business turns out. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me in this epic slog through another six-disc collection of poo. <laughs> Next time we'll talk about something better. I promise. Take care. <laughs>